oil, the sticky, fortune-making, war-inspiring, planet-warming liquid that makes the world go round. Today, the oil and gas industry is one of the largest on the planet, producing some 12.7 billion liters of crude oil and 10 billion liters of natural gas every single day. Such is humanity's insatiable appetite for fossil fuels that we will go to the ends of the earth to find it, from the scorching deserts of the Middle East to the bitumen sands of western Canada to the frigid, crushing depths of the North Sea and the Gulf of Mexico. Yet while it's easy to assume that all of this is a relatively recent phenomenon, a symptom of the 19th century industrialization and 20th century automobile culture, the truth is that we've been at this for far longer than you might think. More than a thousand years before Edwin Drake and Mayor Alex Eve drilled the first commercial oil wells in the mid-19th century, the ancient Chinese were drilling, extracting, and piping natural gas on a scale that rivaled many modern operations. With surprisingly sophisticated tools still used to this day, this is the incredible story of the Sichuan gas fields. Sichuan province lies roughly in the center of China, bounded by the Himalayas to the west, the Longman Mountains to the north, and the Huaying Mountains and Yangtze River to the south. Blessed with fertile soil, a mild climate, and abundant water, Sichuan is one of China's most productive agricultural regions, producing a wide variety of crops from wheat and rice to cotton, tobacco, and mulberry bushes for silkworm cultivation. But the region, which lies on a site of an ancient dried-up ocean, is also blessed with another, far more valuable resource, salt. Vital both as a nutrient necessary for human metabolism and as an agent for preserving food before the advent of refrigeration, salt has been a major driving force in world history for millennia. So much so that the modern expressions salary and worth his salt are thought to derive from the practice of paying Roman soldiers in salt. Throughout Chinese history, people living near the coast obtained salt by boiling seawater. However, as settlement spread further inland, the logistics of transporting sea salt from the coast to the interior became increasingly difficult, and people began seeking a new, more local source for the compound. They found it in Sichuan's deep aquifers of brine, which contains salt concentrations higher than 50 grams per liter. But while this brine sometimes rose to the surface in natural seeps, much of it lay trapped hundreds of meters below the surface, requiring specialized technology to reach and extract. The first brine wells in Sichuan appeared during the Warring States period of 480 to 221 BCE. These were commissioned by Li Bing, a legendary administrator and hydraulic engineer for the state of Qin, most famous for creating the Dujanyan River Control System, which incredibly is still in use more than 2,000 years later. At first, these wells were dug by hand, but by the first century CE, the locals had developed a sophisticated percussive drilling system remarkably similar to early American rigs used in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. In this system, the top few meters of the well were dug out by hand, with the hole being lined with stones drilled through with circular holes. These holes formed a cylindrical guide for a subsequent drilling operation. Once the wellhead was complete, a bamboo derrick, or heaven cart, was erected over top. By the early 20th century, some of these derricks reached up to 100 meters in height, rivaling their more famous Western counterparts. The drill bit consisted of a long vertical bamboo pole tipped with a cast iron chisel head, which in turn was connected to a pivoting seesaw like platform. A worker would repetitively jump on and off this platform, raising and dropping the drill bit onto the bedrock below. Unsurprisingly, this was a slow and tedious process. The drilling speed topped out at less than a meter per day, and it often took months to strike a brine deposit. Despite this, these ancient Chinese drillers achieved some truly impressive feats. By the Tang Dynasty of 618 to 906 CE, they were drilling down to depths of 250 meters. By comparison, early 19th century American wells topped out at only 150 meters. But perhaps more impressive than the sheer depths reached were the wide variety of specialized tools tools and techniques the Sichuan drillers developed to tackle common drilling problems, many nearly identical to those used in today's oil and gas industry. For instance, different drill bits were used for different stages of the drilling process or for cutting through different kinds of rock. Long heavy bits called fishtails were used to start wells. Silver ingot bits drilled rapidly but roughly, while horseshoe bits drilled slowly but produced smooth round boreholes. Tools were also developed to deal with the broken off drill bits, caved in wells, and deviating boreholes. Holes. For example, every so often, mud composed of pulverized rock and groundwater would accumulate in the borehole and had to be cleared out. This was accomplished using a length of hollow bamboo with a hinged flap valve at one end, which was lowered down the borehole. 
When the device was lifted out of the well, the weight of the mud in the tube forced the valve shut, allowing the mud to be lifted out. A similar device was used to extract brine once the well was completed. To repair a caved-in well, bundles of straw were lowered down to the caved-in site, where they would absorb water and expand to plug the hole. This plug was then reinforced with a special cement made of lime and tongue oil, whereupon drilling would continue boring through the repaired cave-in. Around 1050 CE, Sichuan drillers achieved a major breakthrough when they replaced their old, solid drill pipes with flexible bamboo cables. These were much lighter than the old technology and could be wound around a rotating drum, allowing drilling derricks to be smaller and even greater depths to be reached. In 1835, the Shanghai Well became the first in the world to reach one kilometer in depth. At this time, the region's annual salt production was 150,000 tons and growing, with the industry racing to meet the demands of the Chinese population, already nearing half a billion people. The rolling hills of the Sichuan became carpeted with sprawling forests of bamboo derricks, while the Fuxi River was choked with trading boats carrying valuable salt to all corners of China. But this remarkable industrial operation was only made possible by another of the region's abundant natural resources, natural gas. From the very start of brine extraction in Sichuan, drillers began encountering pockets of natural gas composed mainly of methane trapped beneath the salt. The Zhalingzhang Formation, which feeds Sichuan's province's abundant brine aquifers, was formed by the evaporation of a large inland sea during the mid-Triassic period around 225 million years ago. This salt layer forms an impermeable dome which traps large quantities of natural gas produced by the decomposition of ancient marine zooplankton and algae. At first, this gas was seen as a useless byproduct product or even an unwelcome hazard. Indeed, the gas was often contaminated with hydrogen sulfide, a highly toxic gas which could induce nausea, unconsciousness, and even death, depending on its concentration. Eventually, however, the gas's flammable properties were recognized and it began to be used for household lighting, heating, and cooking throughout the region. But it was not until the 2nd century CE that large-scale gas extraction truly began in earnest, largely in response to a resource depletion crisis. Previously, salt had been produced by boiling brine over wood fires, but as the industry grew and local forests became severely depleted, drillers turned to the abundant supply of natural gas as an alternative source of fuel. Exploiting Sichuan's natural gas reserves required the development of yet more advanced technology, including the Kang Pen drum, invented in the late 18th century. This device sat atop the wellhead and allowed both natural gas and brine to be extracted and separated simultaneously. Chinese drillers also also invented one of the world's first carburetors to combine natural gas with air, producing an efficient burning mixture for heating the brine evaporation pans. They even developed a rudimentary understanding of the area's geology, citing brine wells at the bottom of the valleys and gas wells at the top of the hills where gas pockets accumulate under salt domes. But perhaps their greatest achievement was building hundreds of kilometers of bamboo pipelines that carried brine and natural gas as far away as Beijing. As bamboo is naturally divided into closed compartments, building these pipelines was not a matter of simply joining lengths of bamboo together. Instead, the bamboo was split in half, the divided walls carved away, and the two halves joined back together with lime and tongue oil cement. The joint was further reinforced using twine wound around the outside of the pipe. So durable and gas tight were these pipes that as recently as the 1950s, there were over 95 kilometers of bamboo pipelines still in operation around the Sichuan city of Zigong. The vast scale of the Sichuan salt and brine operations had a significant impact on Chinese history and culture. The slow pace of drilling and extraction meant that the derricks and boiling facilities had to be manned 24 hours a day. Consequently, some of the first legal contracts in Chinese history were drawn up by Sichuan salt merchants to negotiate the allocation of workers and other resources. On a larger scale, the scramble for valuable salt and gas attracted hundreds of thousands of people and from across China and surrounding countries, creating a volatile conflict-ridden frontier melting pot and giving Sichuan the diverse cultural makeup it enjoys to this day. Sichuan was not the only hydrocarbon extraction operation of the early modern period, however. In the 12th century, small oil wells were dug near Naples in Italy, while in the 13th century, Venetian explorer Marco Polo described oil extraction at Baku in what is now Azerbaijan. A hundred shiploads might be taken from it at one time. This oil is not good to use with food, but it is good to burn, and it is also used to anoint camels that have the mange. People come from vast distances to fetch it, for in all of the countries around it, they have no other oil. 
However, none of these operations came close to matching the sheer scale and sophistication of the Sichuan gas fields. Today, the region around Zigong is still a major producer of both salt and gas, producing around 30 billion cubic meters of the latter every year, much of it extracted from wells originally opened hundreds of years ago. Yet despite advancements in technology, the work remains as dangerous as ever. For example, on December 23, 2003, a blowout at the gas well near Chongqing killed 233 people, poisoned 9,000, and contaminated more than 25 kilometers of surrounding countryside, with the majority of casualties stemming from hydrogen sulfide inhalation. That the disaster was not even worse is largely due with the locals' near 2,000 years of experience with the land and its volatile natural resources. The legacy of these pioneering workers is preserved and celebrated in the Shangxi Salt Museum housed in a former guild hall built by mid-18th century salt merchants, displaying original artifacts as well as detailed models of historic salt and gas extracting technology. The museum serves as a fitting tribute to a sophisticated industrial operation 2,000 years ahead of its time.